Once you have the ticker tape labeled as per the instructions, set up the equipment just like it is in this picture. Ensure the tape passes between the disc and the screw. That will make a mark on the bottom side of the tape. Next, practice pulling the tape through the timer so that it takes approximately 2 seconds to pull the full 2 meter piece through. Once you feel comfortable with your timing, locate the on-off switch on the side of the timer. Turn the timer on and pull the tape through at as constant a velocity as you can. Flip the tape over to side B and repeat. Note that if you have a motorized cart or a toy car to perform part B of the experiment, you do not need to use side B of the tape. For part B of the experiment, tape the timer to the floor and the ticker tape to the car as shown. Turn on the timer, start the car, and allow it to pull the entire length of the tape through the timer. Then retrieve the car, turn it off, and turn off the timer. Start by skipping approximately the first 20 centimeters of tape. Find a dot, circle it, and mark it as the zero point. Then count six dots forward. One, two, three, four, five, and circle the sixth one. Mark it as one. Then count another six dots after that. Circle the sixth one and mark it as two. Continue on until you have at least 15 points marked. Next, use a meter stick to measure the position of each point in relation to the zero point. This will give us the displacement of the tape as it passed through the timer. Record this information in a table that you've set up ahead of time. Be as accurate as you can to the nearest millimeter. It might help if you tape the ticker tape down to the table. Continue this for all 15 points. Alright, when we go to graph our uh, our data. Um, the first thing we need to do is to put in, of course, our axes. I've done that. Um, and to define a scale. I have defined the scale this as um, one block, and I'm talking the blue blocks, to 50 millimeters for displacement, and one little blue block for every 0 0.1 second. The next thing you need to do is to label your axes. And convention says that time is usually on the x-axis and position on the y-axis. And then you simply need to start plotting your points. Oh wait, sorry, before you do that you should put a uh, you should put in your scale right on your timeline here. Uh, so to do that, you don't have to put one on every single marking. Uh, for instance, I can put this as 0 0.2 and this as 0 0.4. It still follows my scale. And of course, always make sure uh, that you go past year for this data point which is 1.5 seconds, which would be here. And then we'll put in the position as well. Um, one little blue block every 50 millimeters. So again, I don't need to put in on every line. I can do every second. You should always try and keep uh, or try and make your graph fill as much of your graph page as you can. Um, just to, when you're building your scale, uh, you want to use up as much of the paper as you can because that way you can be more accurate uh, instead of trying to draw in a really tiny scale. Alright, now we start to plot our data points. 
our first one here, uh, 0 0.1 seconds is at position 48 millimeters, so 0 0.1, 48 millimeters is just under there. There we go. Second one, 0 0.2 at 97 millimeters. The third one, 0 0.3 at 152. and so on. Then we need to make a best fit line. So we need to pull out a ruler. And when making a best fit line, You do not connect the dots in a straight line, one to the next. What you try and do is line up your ruler so that it comes as close to passing through as many of the dots as possible. have any real oddballs like this one right here that doesn't even come close you can ignore it um, it's most likely um, just uh, it could be a human error maybe I didn't um, measure quite right maybe I wrote something down wrong um, maybe I plotted the point wrong which I could double check I suppose 0 0.5 seconds 228 no, that's about right for plotting so I maybe wrote the number down wrong something went wrong um, so that one's a, a pretty obvious one that we can just ignore. The rest seem to line up pretty well, though. So then we're going to draw in our best fit line. And we're going to make that line pass beyond our points straight as we can. And we should try and get it so that we have as many points above our line as we do below it. So I'm just going to adjust that line a little bit. Here I've got a few above. Here I've got a few below. The most majority, though, are pretty much right on the line. So I can move my ruler out. And now I need to find out what the slope of this line is. Remember to find the slope. Uh, slope is equal to rise over run. Um, you're going to need to make sure you write down this calculation. You may want to write it down um, separately in your re lab report or you could do it right on the graph. I would actually suggest doing it right on the graph. So to do that I'm going to say that slope is equal to rise over run is then I can find um, what you want to do is you want to try and find a spot where um, the line passes right through uh, the junction of a point um, what that'll do is that'll make it a lot easier to make your calculations so I'm going to pick that spot run it straight down and I see that over here it pretty much passes right through that junction as well. Now it might you might not find one that's exact, like this one would have worked. Um, I would avoid one like this, because if we draw this line across here now, this becomes very difficult. Is that 200 is, or 
220 to 25. That's a very difficult one to figure out. So that's why it's always best to try and find one that's as at least close to passing through um, passing through a junction point. Oops, sorry. And you'll run that across. And then I'll have a look here. My rise in millimeters is, well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 blocks at uh, 50 millimeters each. Uh, that's 800 millimeters. So 800 millimeters divided by my run, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 blocks. And my 13 blocks would put me at 1.3 seconds, given my scale. And if we bring in the calculator, work that out. 800 divided by 1.3 is 615. Now, let's see here. We've got our measurements in millimeters. Uh, it would be accurate to probably only two significant figures here. Our time only to uh, one significant figure. Is that right? I guess technically we'd have to look at our ticker tape timer and uh, look maybe on the box that it came in or maybe if the labels is or the, the instructions, it might say how accurate the ticker tape timer is um, in s terms of hertz, if it's 60 hertz, or is it, uh, you know, is that 60 hertz plus or minus 5 hertz? Um, that would tell us our, our accuracy. But for calculation purposes, let's just say uh, that take it to two significant figures. Um, so this would be uh, to two significant figures, 620. So 620, and what would our units be? Our units would be millimeters per second. Now to convert that to meters per second, in order to, uh, to get it into standard SI units, that would be 0 decimal 6 to meters per second. That's the slope. And that should give you a bit of a hint uh, in terms of what the slope means.